All right, so for your do now today, I'd like you to go ahead and review our basic exponential graphs from last time. Go ahead and graph the equation y equals 4 to the x power. 4 to the x power, pause me and try that out for yourself. And I will go ahead and talk about it here. So the idea with an exponential is that the best way that we've learned right now to make a graph is to actually go ahead and make a table. And I said to use the numbers negative two to positive two, but there's a little bit of a wiggle room in that where if some of the points are kind of gross, we don't have to use those and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna start with zero and if I do four to the zero power, we know that equals one. Four to the first is four. Four to the second is a 16. 4 to the negative first is going to be 1 over 4, which is a 0.25. And 4 to the negative second is 1 over 16, which is a pretty small decimal. Um, I don't even really necessarily need to worry about what that decimal is, but it's 0 0.0625. So what I would do is I would start graphing here. I'm going to choose to go by 2s on my y-axis just because I have to get up to a 16. Um, so I'd have negative two, and I'm not even gonna bother with the negative two point because it's basically gonna be real close to zero. I'm gonna have negative one comma like a point one, point, uh, one fourth or point two five. I'm gonna have zero comma one. I would do a one comma four, and I would do a two comma six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Exponential graphs, the dots should always have kind of a curve to them. If your points are like all jagged all over the place, you must have messed up on at least one of them. I know the tail of the graph based on the bend will go to the left and it will straighten out at zero there. I hit my dots and I would make myself a picture like this. So this is the graph of y equals 4 to the x power. What we're going to end up doing in this video is learning how to graph translated versions of exponentials. So you might see something like the equation we've got written right here, where we start adding and subtracting numbers. Now, you have never done one of these before in your life, yet I think if you think about the rules I've taught you guys, you can figure out what direction this graph is gonna move. So if you had to guess, think to yourself, what would this five, subtracting five do? And what would this adding two do to our graph? So hopefully the realization you came to here, if you had to guess like what is the inside for left, right, and what is the outside, the inside is logically gonna be what's up here with the exponent. So it seems logical that this graph would go right five and that it would go up two. But let's actually go ahead and turn to a graphing software to figure out if that's actually the case. So this is a lot nicer than our actual calculators here using Desmos. You can see the graph of y equals four to the x power in red. And as I zoom out, you can see exactly what I talked about here with the idea that this graph has a really steep side and a really, really flat side that levels out at zero. Now, what makes exponentials so tricky, or so not tricky necessarily, because they're not that bad, but they're different than all the other graphs that we have talked about. All of our other graphs, the parent function, has hit at zero comma zero. This graph does not. And if I change it and be like, oh, I want to do a different base right here, I want to do seven to the x power or something like that, it still doesn't hit at zero, zero. So we can't just start here and count left, right, up, down, like we do with like every other kind of graph that I've taught to you guys. There's also not a fake slope thing. Like if I'm zero comma one right here and I go up one over one, I'm not on my graph. So the rules for exponentials, first of all, are gonna have to be different than they already were. What I'm gonna do, I had an X minus five in my exponents. So what I'm gonna do is put that here and show you guys what that does to my picture. And if you look, it does appear that, oh yeah, it actually did just move my picture. That's zero comma one, that's five comma one. So it did actually just move my picture right five units. If I change this number to like a plus five, well, there it is, my second blue graph is left five units. 
So the number in the exponent is controlling my left and right movements. I want you guys to pay attention. Where is the asymptotes on my new blue graph? Okay, I have a plus five right there. If I go left three, if I go right three, if I go right 11, if I go, uh, it was a 22, whatever. If I go left 11, no matter where I move, left or right, the asymptote or the tail of my graph still levels out at zero. Picture if I took this whole red graph right here, and I slid it to the left, which is basically what happened to get this blue picture, the tail is still in the same spot. So it turns out that left-right movement doesn't affect the tail of the graph at all. The asymptote is still at zero. But if I start moving my graph up or down, so for example, if I go down three, all of a sudden the asymptote for my graph is not at zero anymore. Now the tail of my graph is at a negative three, okay? So the tail of my graph is influenced by my vertical translation, by my up and down movement. I went up two, boom, tail is at positive two. So that's a really important conceptual idea that you guys are gonna have to get, like be able to wrap your heads around. Up and down movement affects the placement of your asymptotes. So our original equation that we were trying to graph was a minus five and a plus two. So I'm gonna put that whole thing into my little graph right here. Now, we've already established that, oh, okay, the asymptote is gonna go at positive two for my new blue picture. But we're also gonna to have to worry about what x's we wanna use when we graph it. What x's are we gonna use for our table? If I would have used the classic negative two to positive two, it's what I've made you do every single time we do one of these things, negative two to positive two. Well, on the blue graph, picture what I would see if I went from negative two right here to positive two right here. I would see like useless, like just all flat on the graph right here. So the issue is when you plug in numbers to an exponential, you want to get the sweet spot where you see this middle part, like on the red graph from here to here, you get some flat and you get some steep. If you just blindly go negative two to positive two all the time, it's not going to work anymore. What I'd really want to see is like this part of my blue picture. So the way you make sure that you actually get to see the good part of the picture and not just flat and not just steep is you need to make sure your table is centered at where the exponent is a zero. We'll write this down as rules for you guys in just a little bit. So don't worry if that's like a lot to process. But what I'm actually going to do right here is I am going to plug in X's centering this guy at zero. That means the middle x that I am going to use in this problem is going to be a positive 5. If you look back at my nice picture, oops, oh, I didn't know I could draw on that. That's kind of nice. Um, if you look back at my nice picture right here, if I go to positive 5, I will get a great view of both parts of my picture. So you need to make sure your exponent is centered at 0. And then what you're going to do is go one unit lower and one unit higher. So that way you'll get a little bit of everything. So we need to plug these x's in to the equation and use those x's to get my coordinates. Before I made you do five points, like on the last lesson, today I'm cool with a minimum of three points. You got your middle point and you got one in each direction. Now, you could just type this whole thing in the calculator with a 5 plugged in, and that would totally work. But I want to practice our mental math skills a little bit right here. And I'm going to start with the middle points. So picture this right here. If I do 4 to the 0 power, that's just a 1. And then 1 plus 2 is going to get out a 3 for me for my middle point right here. 
If I plug in a 6, I'm going to have 4 to the 6 minus 5 plus 2. That's 4 to the 1st, which is 4, plus 2 is a 6. And then if I go and I plug in a 4, I'm going to have 4 to the 4 minus 5 is a negative 1, plus 2. That's going to be 0.25 or 1 fourth, plus 2 is 2.25. You can always type those in the calculator if that was weird, but basically you just plug and chug and you get your three coordinates. Before I go and graph those points, I need to also identify where the asymptotes of this graph is gonna be. And we covered that your up and down number right here is what controls that asymptote. So my asymptote on this graph will not be zero like the other ones, it's gonna be at a positive two. All of my numbers are real small here, so I'm just going to go by ones for my picture. But I'm going to put a dashed line for myself at positive two, because that is going to guide where the tail of my graph ends up. Now it's coordinate time. I'm going to go to four comma 2.25, which would be like here. I'm going to go to five comma three. And then I'm going to go to six comma six. I get three dots. Once you have your three dots, you're going to go ahead and look at the way that they're bending. The dots are bending like you see me doing right here. So what I'll do is I'll go really flat. I'll hit my three dots and then I'll go really steep on the other side. And that's going to be my exponential graph. This graph has exponential growth. Domain is all real numbers. The range is that the y's are above 2. And then the end behavior, as x approaches infinity, so to the right, the y's approach infinity. It's up on the right. And then as x approaches negative infinity, f of x is going to approach, actually, the asymptote value of a positive 2. That's a lot to take in at first, but these actually get pretty straightforward with a little bit of practice. So we're going to look at a couple more examples for you guys to try. First, though, let's go ahead and write down the official rules just to look back in your notes at later. When you graph a translated exponential, there are really two things you have to worry about doing. The first is that you need to figure out your horizontal asymptote is controlled by your up-down translation. So the number on the outside that you're adding or subtracting controls where your horizontal asymptote is going to go. And then you need to use the x's in your table. They need to be centered where the exponents um, equals zero. So what does that mean? Well, on my last example, I had an x minus 5. So what I did is I made sure I used a positive 5 for my starting x right there because it made my exponent be a zero. If you do those two things, you should be in really good shape for making your graphs. So. Let's look at a fresh problem. This one will still kind of set up together and then you guys can try the next one on your own. First thing I do, well, there's two first things that I do. I'm gonna go ahead and make my table right away. And the X's I put in my table are gonna be centered at whatever makes this guy into zero. So if it's X plus six, I'm gonna need to use a negative six to see the good part of my graph. Then I'm gonna go one point either way. I'm going to use negative 7 and negative 5. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to look at my up-down number. If my graph moves down 30, that means my horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 30. I'm going to hold off on putting my dotted line until I can see what my, my, my y's look like, because that's going to help me decide like what I'm going to do for my like tick marks. So I'm going to go ahead and plug these x's in. The middle x is usually the easiest. And again, there's nothing to stop you from just typing this thing in the calculator, but it builds character and mental math skills to do it in your head. 
So one fifth to the zero is just gone. That's one. I'm going to get 20 times one minus 30, which is a negative 10 for right here. Maybe pause me and see if you can figure out this one for yourself. So I got 20 times a fifth, and I got to do negative 5 plus 6, and then minus 30. That's going to be 1 fifth to the first, which is a fifth. Fifth of 20 is 4. 4 minus 30 is a negative 26. And then I've got to do a negative 7. So for that one... I'm going to, again, see if you can do this without me telling you. That's going to be a fifth to the negative 1, which flips it and turns it to positive 5. 20 times 5 is 100. 100 minus 30 is going to be a 70. So these are going to be the points that I need to graph. Looking at these points and looking at my HA, it makes sense to me to go by tens for my picture. Make sure when you do that, you label at least one tick mark with a number so we can all see what we're doing here. I'm going to graph negative 7, comma, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That's going to go right there. I'm going to graph negative 6, comma, negative 10. That's another easy, clean point right there. And I got to graph negative 5, comma, negative 26, which would be like their itch. Before I draw my picture, I got to have one more thing. You have to make sure you show me where the asymptote goes. The horizontal asymptote is at negative 30. So we're going to draw a dashed line at negative 30. And that is going to make it clear to us where the tail of the graph goes. You're going to look at your three points. And you're going to go with the flow at how these points bend. So I'm going to go real steep. I'm going to hit my dots best I can, and then I'm going to go flat over here. I could make you, well, let's do this stuff one more time. I won't do it after this one. This is decay. Um, the domain is all real numbers. HA is right there. The range, the Ys are above a negative 30. And then end behavior, we can write it, I guess. As X approaches infinity, Y would approach a negative 30. And as x approaches negative infinity, the y would approach positive infinity. So all of those are nice things to talk about when you do exponentials. So try this one out all the way by yourself. Pause me. Do the table. Do the asymptote. Do the points. Do the graph. Just get it all done. You don't have to write down the domain range and all that stuff if you don't want to. So talking through this one here, now that you guys have actually tried it, I know my table would center at a positive 3. I'd go 2. I'd go 4. My HA is going to be Y equals 100. I'll come back with the points and the picture. All right, so I came back with my points right here. They were all 100 or less, so I decided to just go by 10s. You certainly could have done 20s or something like that. But then you can see, based on these three dots right here, they sort of follow a pattern, and they are clearly bending to the left this way. So I would go flat on the left side. I would hit my dots, and it's going to be a steep side pointing down. I'm not going to make you write all the stuff for these, but this would be considered growth because you have a number under the exponents that is bigger than one. Um, one other thing I haven't done yet that like I sometimes could ask you for is I could ask you about intercepts on this, the X intercept and the Y intercept. You can eyeball those by looking at your picture. So you can say about where each of those intercepts would be for this graph. Um, one way to do it though, if I ask you about like a Y intercept, you could put a zero for X you could get me an exact answer for the y-intercept. Just plug in a zero right there, type it in the calculator. The x-intercept, on the other hand, is trickier because we don't know how to solve an exponential equation just yet. You don't know how to get x by itself when you put a zero for y. So if I ask you about those, you can estimate them off the picture or find at least the y-intercept by typing it in the calculator. Let's do one more of this style here. And again, you guys can pause me, try it for yourself, and then we'll talk about it. 
All right, so I want to comment on a couple things here with regards to the table. First of all, this one, the numbers were a little bit messier. We're doing it in my head, wasn't super great. An option, instead of just typing it in the regular menu, if you put your equation with an X in the Y equals and you go second table, you can just get all the coordinates you would want out of the table all at once. Saves you from having to type them in one at a time. You can even look at your picture afterwards to see what you're supposed to be looking at. Another trick you can use, when you graph exponentials, I need to see at least three clear points on your picture. So I looked at this one and I was like, oh, negative one comma negative 35. I don't really want to have to scale my tick marks and everything. So I chose to use a two instead, comma negative 3.06, which isn't a great point. But that way I was able to just go by ones for my picture. So I will give you guys a little bit of flexibility when you do these. If you want to mix up the X's you use, as long as I can see clearly a steep side and a flat side, and you can use good dots there, you have a little bit of freedom to wander a little farther from just the center that I gave you guys. So that's how you graph translated exponentials. I have one last thing to talk about in this video. And it's just a little bit about how you would make an exponential equation. So a little bit of a change of pace right here. First of all, you guys should know by now that doing something like slope would not help me at all on this problem because it's not a linear equation. This is an exponential. Uh, the strategy I would use when you do this right here is to try to think about this as a table. So in my table, they gave me 1 comma 6 and they gave me 3 comma 54. I talked last video about how the idea with an exponential is that we actually are multiplying by the same number every single time. So we would have to think about what we are multiplying by every time. So six times what times what makes a 54? Well, six times nine is 54. So that means it's being multiplied by three every single time. So six times three, this must be an 18 right here. 18 times three gets me a 54. Well, think about the setup for an exponential. y equals a times b to the x power, assuming it hasn't been translated. The number that we're multiplying by right here, this times 3, is actually the number under the exponent right here. Because if I have a 3 to the second power, 3 to the third power, I'm going to multiply by 3 another time. So my equation right here must have a times 3 under my exponent because I'm repeatedly multiplying by 3. If you think about this number here for a, if I were to put a 0 in for x right here, this part is going to cancel and I would just get out this number right here. So if I think about 0 for x, the number that goes here is actually a. So if I multiply by 3 to go this way in my table, I would have to divide by 3, meaning that this number right here is actually a 2. It's going to end up being my y-intercept for this problem. So the actual equation, or an equation, that would fit the bill for this right here is 2 times 3 to the x power. And you could plug in those points and see that they actually work. So that's a little bit trickier and a little bit more of a thinking question right there. But hopefully you guys are starting to understand the basics of exponential functions.